Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Manchester City was a great team before Pep. However, he's turned them into possibly the greatest team in Premier League history. But how has he achieved this? Well, in this video we take a look at how Pep transformed Manchester City. Just before we get into that though, if you're new around here, I'd appreciate it if you liked, commented and subscribed. If you want to see more match reviews, player and manager profiles and so much more, drop video suggestions below or tweet at Football Made Simple. Now, let's get into it. We'll be using a few stats when looking at the transformation, and a good place to get stats like this is OneFootball, which is the best football app you can get. And it's free, so go ahead and download it through the link in the description. Before Pep, there was Pellegrini, who enjoyed a fairly successful three-year stint with the club, winning a Premier League, two League Cups and reaching a Champions League semi-final. However, he had his fair share of tactical problems. He would go through long spells of sticking with the same formation, despite poor results. Initially, he was a 4-4-2 man, but in his last season he stuck to the 4-2-3-1. One of the problems he had was the makeup of the midfield. Yaya Toure was key to his team, meaning he often started in a 2 alongside Fernandinho, with one of De Bruyne and Silva in the 10 role, and the other one wide. The problem is that one of De Bruyne or Silva wouldn't be in their ideal position, which would reduce their effectiveness. And when they moved central, it left space on the outside. Sterling would also be limited, as his only route to goal was by cutting in, making him predictable. In addition, Yaya was poorly disciplined, often pushing high up the pitch and not retreating in defence. So, when they were counter-attacked against, Fernandinho would often be overpowered and the midfield would be bypassed easily. Occasionally, Pellegrini would stiffen the midfield by pushing Yaya to the 10 roll and introducing Fernando. But now, both Silva and De Bruyne would be wide and drifting centrally, and the aging fullbacks pushed high up, so City were vulnerable down the wings. The squad was also very old and lacked pace, and couldn't press when defending either. When Pellegrini chose to announce he was leaving in February, it also killed off their league season. Before the announcement, City was second in the league, averaging 1.91 points per game. The table after that has City in 9th, averaging only 1.46 points per game. So City just about snuck into the top 4 and the Champions League for the next season. At the same time, Pep had been experiencing success in the Bundesliga, winning 3 on the trot, a Super Cup, 2 DFB Pokals, a Club World Cup, but he came under heavy criticism for only ever reaching the semi-final in the Champions League when he left. When City missed out on getting Pep in 2012, they decided to make preparations to tempt him to come to the club eventually. A major ploy was hiring former Barcelona employees that Pep felt comfortable working with. This included Ferran Soriano, former Barca vice president, Chiqui Begaristein, former Barca technical director, and Dr. Eduardo Mauri. In addition, in the few windows before he came in, he was consulted on which players he approved of signing, for example Sterling and De Bruyne. When it was announced that Pep would be taken over, the feeling around City was generally excited, but some media were still unconvinced whether Guardiola's methodologies would work in the Premier League. And as soon as he arrived, he identified some problems in his squad. The squad was heavily aging, and in fact only Watford, Stoke and West Brom had higher average squad ages. There were also players who were clearly not suited to his squad. Barney was not technical enough, Hart and Mangala both weren't good enough on the ball, and Nasri and Torre didn't have the required discipline. The major transfers in his first season were Gundogan, Lolito, Zinchenko, Sane, Stones, Bravo and Jesus. At the same time, he got rid of Di Michaelis, Jovetic, Hart, Nasri, Bonnie, Mangala and more, serving to age down the squad and free up space for the new arrivals. During his first season, Pep struggled to find his best 11. As a result, he didn't settle on a formation, using 8 different formations throughout the season. But his most common formation was a 4-3-3, consisting of the following. Kolarov was at left centre-back due to company's recurring injuries and wanting a left-footed player at left centre-back. In addition, Silva and De Bruyne took up the free 8 roles tasked with both advancing to the 10 positions on the ball and defending when needed. When building up, Fernandinho dropped between the centre-backs and Guardiola was happy to allow Stones or Kolarov to advance to midfield on the build-up. Kolarov was used here because of his ability to deliver a long switch to Sterling with speed and accuracy, as shown by him completing the most long balls of outfielders with 4.2 per game. Usually, Whippip had had fullbacks who were capable of dominating the flanks, now he had Clichy and Sanya, who were both over 30 and had lost their athleticism. So, 
To give them width, he used traditional wingers, with Nalito falling out of favour for Sane and Sterling being on the right. The fullbacks drifted centrally, drawing the opposition's wingers, and Guardiola had faith in his wingers when one on one, so he'd encourage quick switches to the wide areas. But the fullbacks' positioning also freed De Bruyne and Silva to advance to support the attack, meaning City used a 3 2 5, allowing options in every phase. From here, Silva and De Bruyne would link up with their respective winger easily. The wingers were rarely a goal threat due to their positioning, so they both finished with under 10 goals and assists. A problem emerged midway through the season. Aguero, throughout the seasons, had developed into more of a penalty box forward, mainly waiting there for the finish. But Pep needed a forward more capable of dropping deep to create space in the box and pressing when defending. But it just wasn't working, and for a while, Gabriel Jesus came in to achieve this goal. Before Jesus, against Barcelona, De Bruyne had started as the centre forward, and Aguero was benched, showing that Aguero wasn't quite delivering what Pep needed. But after Jesus was injured, Aguero re-entered the fray. The positioning of the team meant that their centre was protected, allowing them to stop counter-attacks and press fairly effectively. However, on the build-up, Clichy and Sanya in these positions would often slow down the play as they weren't great on the ball. In addition, playing Kolarov at centre-back did not give them the required defensive solidity. And they also suffered as Bravo's form completely dissipated, and he conceded often, but Pep needed his ball-playing ability. So, they conceded 10 more goals than expected. But overall, City improved on Pellegrini's last season in many aspects, scoring more, conceding less, having more possession, more passes and more. But the poor finishing did haunt them this season, meaning that they were well below the expected points. Aguero in particular was 3 goals below his XG, which is unusual. But De Bruyne thrived high up the pitch, getting 18 assists. This didn't result in any silverware though, losing in the third round of both domestic cups, losing a thriller to Monaco where their defensive frailties were exposed, and finishing third in the league despite having the highest expected points in the league. It was a decent first season, but there was still pressure mounting. Guardiola was accused of not adapting to the team. For example, when he played with a high line against Leicester, despite this playing straight into Vardy's hands. And Pep also questioned his team's mentality, as he said, I think it's one of the things we need to improve. We have to react when we're in the bad moments and keep doing what we normally do. To fix their core problems, Pep visited the transfer market. In came Bernardo, Edison, Walker, Danilo, Mendy and Laporte. Out went Clichy, Nava, Sanya, Zabaleta, Nelito, Kolarov, Ihanacho and more, now making them the 6th youngest squad in the league. In the first couple of games of the new season, the new fullbacks could dominate the wings, so they shifted to a 5-3-2. This also allowed Aguero and Jesus to both feature, but after Mendy's early injury, Pep recommitted to the 4-3-3. Walker was a right back and Delph was adapted to become a left back. Edison was also crucial. He was comfortable playing the ball short, but was also a good shot stopper. In addition, his long kicking range meant that if opponents tried to press, he could play it over the top to the forwards, or if they dropped deep to cover this, space opened up for them to build up. The fullbacks were key to the build up. Delph would tuck into midfield, but Walker often moved to the right centre back position. This meant Fernandinho could now stay in the central midfield position for better ball progression and became the true hub of the team, with his passes per game shooting up from 68 to 88. Also having Dalph, a natural central midfielder, helped the pace of their build-up. But Walker was allowed flexibility, with Pep now coaching him to know when to shift to centre-back and when to push higher up like a regular right-back for the cross. Again, Silva and De Bruyne pushed high, and now they dominated the half spaces. From these slots, they could influence the opposition's fullbacks, centre backs, and wide midfielders. If they were left free, Silva threaded pinpoint passes to Sane, and De Bruyne was more likely to whip a cross in. But if defenders closed them down, the wingers could now be played in to cross into the box. Aguero was now accustomed to his new role, and would often link up the play attracting defenders, which freed Sterling and Sane to be fed and crossed to the other for a tap in. Sterling's improvement was rapid in this season. When Walker drifted wide, it allowed him to play as an inside forward, as De Bruyne attracted defenders and could also overlap himself, providing the cross. Sterling's attacking improvement under Guardiola has been tangible. Under Pellegrini, he felt pigeonholed and forced into a passing game, but Guardiola freed him, allowing him to attack his fullback and dribble more, as shown by his rising dribble numbers. Pep has positioned him in high positions and instructed him to attack the box, leading to more shots per game in high quality areas. In this season, he shifted from just being a winger to more of an inside forward. 
Defensively, their pressing game was now strong and they would stop attacks before they began by forcing the opposition long, whilst Edison would be ready to win any balls over the top. As a result, City conceded the least short passes per game and shots per game. For more depth on their pressing system, check out the link in the cards now and at the end of the video. All of this meant that City won the League Cup, accumulated a record-breaking 100 points whilst breaking a slew of records along the way. Could they back it up in 1819? Well, the only major transfer in was Riyad Mahrez, was getting rid of Yaya, Diaz and Gunn amongst others, more of a tweak than a major change. The same can be said of the tactics, with most of them being tweaks rather than massive changes. One change was more often in this season, he began to invert his wingers, as Zinchenko came in at left back. Zinchenko can play higher and wider than Delph, allowing Sterling to be placed on the left while Zinchenko gave the width. And Bernardo and Mahrez would often be on the other side, with Walker also able to overlap. And generally in this season, the wingers tucked in more, resulting in higher output. One particularly interesting tactic though, was when he used Fernandinho almost as a false centre-back against Arsenal. In the defensive phase, he operated as a regular centre-back, however on the ball, as Laporte was a left-back, Fernandinho would shift into midfield and beyond whilst Walker tucked in to form a back three. Fernandinho and Gundogan as double pivots could then expertly keep possession and overload the midfield. De Bruyne had been their player of the year for two seasons, but spent most of the season injured or returning to fitness. Bernardo filled the role expertly, stepping into centre midfield. His technique going forward was exemplary, whilst his energy enabled him to be just as effective in defence. This was City's most successful season, winning the domestic treble or quadruple with only the Champions League missing from their trophy cabinet. They held off a strong challenge from Liverpool, securing the title on the final day with 98 points. Will Pep continue the evolution in 1920? Let me know what you think in the comments below. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.